You know, a, a jab, okay, oftentimes sets up a reaction so that you can kind of, you know, set patterns and so forth. And it's kind of like, you know, I mean, obviously you don't want to get hit in the face with a jab, but at the same time, a jab can be just a decoy to make you move in order to set up your right and so forth, uppercuts and threes and fours and all that stuff. Okay, so, uh, Tim Winbarty. So oftentimes you could be using your lapel as a reaction in order to set them up. I mean, an action to set up their reaction. Okay. This could be a real submission potential, or this could be kind of like a jab that forces him to move in a way that I know he's going to move. Because my objective, as Jean Jacques always taught me, is that first one to change of position loses. How do you make them change of position? First, you make them uncomfortable and you restrict the movement so they have to adjust to your pressure and the discomfort. Their adjustment, you already know, they can move to the left, to the right, or way in, and you're already knowing that if they move away, you're gonna do A. If you're, they move into you, you're gonna do B. But the pressure is creating the discomfort, okay? So when you're here, I know that my pressure is creating discomfort. I know this is creating discomfort right here. I know that there's a certain limited amounts he's gonna move. He's not gonna hop up this feet. I don't have to anticipate for that. I know that potentially he can frame my head. I can begin to roll my head this way here, okay? I know that he'll possibly maybe want to go for an underhook with this arm here. I can go this way here. Ooh. And you can set all this up because you already have, 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 have had such a kind of like a database of movement that your body remembers that there's only so many ways that they can move. And it's very typical. You reverse your base. That's why it's important to roll the hips. So I'm not saying, because if I'm here, okay, and he frames my head. And he keeps framing, and I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna be here. It's like my, you know, my neck is far. I'm going like, okay, what I'm gonna do here? Okay, I'm here, and then he's, and then he moves his hips, and then, and then I'm here, and I'm sliding off, and I'm not moving. And pretty soon he's sliding his knee, in, and I'm already late. And you know, if you notice, you know, I already was quite late. Or he's gonna take this hand and put it in as a C frame. Why? Even worse. Okay. So I'm here. Okay, he frames my head first, frames, and now he goes for the C frame. And now he starts keeping it away. And look, I'm driving right, right into him just to see how much he can move versus me being able to gain the space. And why? He's moving, I'm not moving. His movement put me in a position where I'm just behind. You know what I mean? It's like when you're here, come on. It's like when you're playing chess and you're being set up and you know you just won two moves behind and it's just inevitable and you're gonna get your queen taken and you're gonna get your checkmate. Okay? So when you're here, I want to create discomfort on him because I know if I move his head this way, he'll have to realign the head. He realigns the head, I regrip his head. And yeah, I know he's trying to hook my foot here and so forth here. I move this way, this way here. I can even move this here, feed it right from here. Okay. And he's got his head turned into me. He's like, it's fine. You know, so I'm here. And now it's very uncomfortable for him, probably, just to even be here. Now I say to myself, well, what's the reaction? So what would you do from here, Tim? What I do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Die. <laughs> okay. I know the reaction is, is one, he's going to move his hips away. He, he, his, his frames don't work anymore. Look, if you do look. Look, we go back to this right here. Look. I'm here, look, I can even pin his arm with my knee right here, we'll do here. See, he's already done. And it's so tight right here, I could finish him here by leaning back, okay? Or I can put my knee down and I'm just gonna walk to this side. He's gonna roll to this side. Yes, and I'm blocking with my left shoulder here, okay? And from here, I'm gonna reach, scoop his head up, grab his V, and I'm gonna pull his head up as my left wrist rolls, okay? So there's the counter to that count, okay? Do uh, you want? Uh, So you can feed this and just start torquing it, and then you're gonna look at them and you say, well, what are they gonna do? Because your submissions, you gotta understand one thing. You should, 
you have to get so good and confident in your submissions that when you're applying the submission, you should be able to hold it three, four, five seconds. And they should already know they're caught. Give them an opportunity to escape so you feel their potential to escape. Because if you don't give yourself the opportunity to explore what happens when you have caught in the submission and potentially when you lose it and what kind of movement they're making, you're gonna be hitting submissions, you're gonna be pulling it so hard, you're not gonna have that finite feeling of what actually caused the real end, end, end of that particular moment, you know what I mean? So here, because if you notice, when I, when I armbar you guys, I'm not just like hitting an armbar, just pulling fast. I, I, I lock it up and then, okay, maybe I'll let you guys wiggle out of it, maybe whatever, you know, but I don't just like hit it and pull it. Sometimes you will black belt and all you want to pull, but you want to have the control because I don't want to pull too far. Even with, 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 the, with the lapels, if I get a black belt and, and, and I hit the, like a groin or something like that, I'm not going to crank it unless they're nail, and then I'll crank it. Okay, so look, we're here, you know, so look. I'm here, moving. Here, and I slide, slide back right here. So here, I know he's he's he can't be too comfortable here. He just can't be. So what you do here? Now, what I want you guys to do is just walk around the head, okay? Uh, Scott, point your head at the camera and hit it a little bit. So what we're going to do is this. So you're going to have a cooperative partner so you can feel what happens here. Same position here. Look, here. Look, it just wants to be fed right back to your hand. Right here, look. It's like, oh, yeah. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my knee here. I'm gonna bring my foot and knee over, okay? As my right knee comes over, and I'm just gonna walk around, walk around, walk around, okay? From here, he's gonna roll to his side to relieve the pressure, and I'm gonna stop his roll with my shoulder. I have to stop his roll on the side. From here, I'm gonna twist into his neck with my left hand. Twist, scoop, hug that head, go up on the head, twist, bring my elbow down okay but I want you guys to be able to walk around the head real easy and wrap this lapel around the lapana really like this so if you guys could roll with the lapana you guys can even feel such a this good and here is that it from here what I'm gonna do is I need to bring this arm over here here my head comes back to that side. He's gonna roll to his side. And I'm gonna stop him with my shoulder right here. Okay? That is very powerful because from here he's got nowhere to go. Okay? From here, I dip my right shoulder, scoop his head up, grab his back, and I'm gonna lift him up. I'm sorry. I'm gonna lift up on the head, grabbing this like a lever. And my elbow lifts up as my left elbow. So your right elbow lifts the head up, and the left elbow twists with this goes in the neck. Okay, try it. One, two, three. Call us the walk around we're going. Walk around the head. And you gotta straighten your left arm. Pull your lapels out. Mm -hmm. 